Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to jump into the topic of version control systems. Uh, more specifically, we're gonna talk about Git and GitHub. So whether you are a seasoned data scientist or just starting out, knowing and understanding how to work with these tools is critical for normal project collaboration. So this video is really gonna kind of kick things off, get you kind of acquainted with the idea of Git and GitHub, and then future videos will kind of start diving into those and get you working with those two systems. So let's get started. All right, so now before we dive into Git, let's demystify the concept of version control. So imagine you're working on a project and over time you're making changes. Maybe you're doing a, a new feature um, addition. Maybe you are fixing some bugs, you know, just tweaking the code here and there. Version control not only allows you to make these changes to kind of evolve your code, but it also allows you to kind of revisit specific versions over time. Uh, so basically think of version control as a time machine for your code base. It's a system that keeps track of all the changes that you make to your files like over time. And it also allows you to recall specific versions whenever you need them. So version control is an invaluable tool for data scientists, engineers, or any other developers that are working on a code base. And it allows us to make sure that there's a structured and organized way that we can collaborate and make changes to kind of evolve and enhance our code over time. So why choose Git? Because there's actually several other types of um, systems that we could use for version control. However, Git has become by far the dominant version control system used by the vast majority of data scientists, machine learning engineers, and traditional software devs. So first, Git is lightning fast. Whether you're tracking changes, creating branches, merging code, all this is stuff that we're gonna cover in later videos. Git performs these operations with incredible speed. Even when you're dealing with very large code bases, the speed of Git operations is phenomenal. All right, two, Git supports distributed nonlinear workflows. What exactly does this mean? Well, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit more detail later on. But right now, just think about whenever you have more than one person working on a project, so each developer can actually have their own entire copy of the project to do experiments and work on enhancing the code. This allows everyone to work independently when they're working on features or bug fixes without interfering with each other. It's like having your own playground to experiment with ideas. And when we're ready, we can seamlessly merge all these changes that the different folks that are working on this project back into one to have an overall enhanced code base. Three, Git is open source, which means it's free and enough said. And lastly, collaboration is at the heart of Git. So whether you're working solo or with a team on a large project, Git simplifies this process of collaborating across multiple people and even multiple teams. Multiple developers can work on different parts of the project simultaneously. And Git intelligently knows how to integrate all these changes at once into the main code base. All right, so let's clear up a common misconception. Git is not the same thing as GitHub. While they work hand in hand, they are actually different tools that serve different purposes. Git, as we discussed earlier, is a version control system. It is a program that's installed on our local computer that allows us to track changes that we make to a project over time. GitHub, on the other hand, is a web-based platform built around Git. Think of GitHub as a collaborative space in the cloud it provides a centralized hub for developers to store their Git repositories or projects and collaborate on other projects available. GitHub offers a graphical interface, issue tracking, pull requests, all of these making it easier for teams to work together and collaborate. All right, so one key distinction is Git is local. It resides on your own machine. So when you are working with a project and you're using Git to do this, you are working with your own local copy of the project. And we call this, we call this idea of your own copy of a project a repository, okay? So when you are using Git, you are working with your own local repository. Now, often we want to host that repository or push that repository to some central location where it's organized. And we do that on GitHub. And so GitHub is that um, web-based um, platform that allows us to store repositories or projects for others to collaborate. So in summary, Git is your version control system installed on your computer, managing your project's history locally, 
where GitHub is a cloud-based platform that facilitates collaboration, code hosting, and social interaction amongst developers for a given project. So when you're working with Git, think local. And when you're collaborating with others and leveraging the power of the cloud, that's where GitHub comes into play. All right, so before we can get our hands dirty with Git, we actually need to make sure Git is installed. So the easiest way to do that is open up your terminal or your command prompt and type git dash dash version. If you do not get a response similar to mine, it likely means you need to install Git, which is fairly straightforward. So if you need to install Git, then open your web browser and head over to the official Git website, which is git scmcom So this is the central hub for all things Git. Now on the homepage, you'll find a prominent download button. Click on it to navigate to the download page and Git is compatible with all the different types of operating systems, whether you're working on a Windows machine, a Mac machine, or a Linux machine. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna select your operating system from the options presented on the download page. For Windows users, this might involve downloading an executable installer, while Mac OS users can opt for a package installer if you'd like. And Linux users will find instructions for installing Git through their package manager. Once the download is complete, go ahead and run the installer and follow the on-screen instructions. The installation process is pretty user-friendly and you can generally stick with the default settings unless you have specific preferences in mind. So after the installation is complete, then it's a good idea to go back to your terminal or command line prompt and just make sure everything worked out. And the easiest way to do that is again, just type git double dash version. All right, so if you've never used git before, we want to do just a couple of real simple, basic configurations. We want to give it our name and our email. Okay, so to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the command git config and then basically the configurations that we want to set. So let's head over to our terminal or command prompt and do this ourselves. All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to type git config and then we're going to do dash dash global and then your username. Now, after that, we're going to do git config double dash global again, and then use your email along with your email of choice. All right, now notice that we use this double global command. All right, so the idea here is we are setting for all our Git projects, we're gonna set our username and our email. There's actually ways that we can um, have different emails attached to different projects, right? Um, and there's ways that we can do that within our configuration setup. For right now, we're just gonna set the global configuration. All right, so there's a bunch of other configurations that we can set up. And if you really like getting into configurations of your systems, um, by all means, go ahead, check out this URL right here. And this will kind of explain a lot of the different con configurations you can set and how to do so. But for right now, we have the basics that we need. All right, so there you have it. You have successfully installed Git and you configured it. So now you are ready to start using Git for version control and collaboration purposes. All right, so to start using Git, we technically do not need GitHub. However, typically we are using Git and GitHub hand in hand. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have our GitHub account set up. So if you've not done so, make sure you follow through these instructions so you can get your GitHub account. If you already have a GitHub account, go ahead, jump forward to the next section. All right, so to set up GitHub so that you can host your projects online and make it easy to collaborate with others, we're gonna head over to the GitHub website. So on the GitHub homepage, you will find a sign up button and you wanna click on it and go ahead and go through the registration process. You'll be prompted to fill in your username, email address and secure password, all the normal stuff. And this is going to allow you to create your own GitHub profile. It's gonna ask you to choose a plan. Uh, there are different plans. Uh, you have paid plans for organizations and businesses but there are also free plans for individual um, developers. So for right now, you can go ahead and choose the free plan uh, because you're gonna be acting as kind of your own individual developer. All right, once you get through this process, GitHub is gonna go ahead and they're gonna send you a verification email um, to kind of authenticate. Go ahead, go through that process as usual. Um, and once your account is verified, you can now go ahead and start personalizing your profile. You can add a profile picture, you can add a bio, and any other information that you'd like to share with other developers that may come across your um, account. All right, so now that your account is all set up on GitHub, 
One thing I'd actually suggest you do is go ahead, spend a little time just kind of poking around and seeing um, kind of what's out there in GitHub. There are millions and millions of projects hosted, but I've listed a few here that are kind of worth checking out. And you'll just kind of see like how mature projects kind of look within GitHub. Don't worry about um, reading the code. Um, if you're not familiar with Python, that is perfectly fine. The idea more is like, just take a look at how these different projects are kind of um, set up and constructed and organized within GitHub. All right, so there you go. You're all set up with a GitHub account. All right, in future videos, we're gonna cover how do we start working with Git and GitHub together to make for easy collaboration and project management. But for right now, you're all set up and ready to go. All right, so before we wrap up, let's talk about Git's distinctive feature. And that's what we call distributed source control. So unlike traditional centralized system, where there's like a single repository, a single location that everyone interacts with. So Git actually operates on a distributed model. What does that mean? Well, in a distributed system, each developer working on a project has their own complete copy of the project, including its full history, okay? So this means that not only have you got the latest code you being used in that project, but you have the entire project's timeline right in your local machine. So another major advantage of being distributed is the ability to work offline. So whether you're on a plane, in a coffee shop with spotty Wi-Fi, or just prefer to code without a constant internet connection, Git allows you to make commits, create branches, perform all these various operations entirely offline. So this brings up another feature of being distributed. So every clone of a Git repository is a complete backup. If the central server goes down or if there are issues with a particular hosting service, developers can still collaborate using their local copies. This redundancy ensures the safety and security of your project's history. Also, each developer's local copy is a fully functional repository. This enables developers to work on features, bug fixes entirely on their own and separate from any of the other work that's ongoing in that repository or project. You can create branches, you can experiment with code fixes or bug fixes all you want, and only when you are ready, you can make that decision to go ahead and take your local copy and merge it back to the main project so that others can experience the enhancements or changes you made in the code. So this parallel work just streamlines collaboration and minimizes conflicts with the other work that people may be doing on that same project. So in essence, Git being a distributed source control system empowers developers with flexibility, independence, and redundancy. So it's not just about tracking changes, but it's also about empowering collaboration in a dynamic and efficient way. All right, so in our next video, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into using Git and GitHub. So basically, how do we start doing a lot of common Git operations, creating a new branch? How do we make this thing called a commit? What is a commit? How do we actually start pushing these commits or changes in our code back to the main project repository? So stay tuned for some Git goodness, huh? All right, folks, so that wraps up our introduction to Git and GitHub. In the future videos, we're gonna start diving deeper into Git and all its operations, and also start working with GitHub for easy and efficient collaboration. Okay, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for future programming tutorials. All right, happy coding.